You can catch glimpses of the South Umpqua River while racing along the interstate. Or you can see it Tim Palmer's way. You know, you can drive the highways, driving along, you look through the windshield. A lot of what you see is the pavement out ahead, landscape beyond. That's the view from the car. When you're in the canoe, what you see is mostly water. And then you see the shorelines, and then you see this gorgeous sky beyond. It's a totally different view of Oregon. And to me, it's the only way to see it, because this is the natural way. You know, this is the path of the water. It's the path of the ages. It's the path of the explorers. It's my path. Tim's about the closest thing there is in Oregon to a river evangelist, born not far from the Ohio River. He was raised among rivers at their most polluted. Yet the grace of his paddling tells you that rivers became a big part of Tim's life. And it's a passion he doesn't mind sharing. I think we often think of river sports as the province of the skilled angler or the experienced boater. But in fact, rivers are for everybody. Here's a fact. Most Oregonians live within just a few miles of a river. And many of the rivers we take for granted are, in fact, exceptional. We have more free-flowing rivers. We have more long river trips that you can do. We have 10 rivers of epic length that you can run a river trip on in Oregon. That's more than any other state in the West. Tim's four-day trip on the undammed South Umpqua began in the wilderness, passed through farmlands, and eventually flowed through a city of over 20,000 people. We've got the last of the I-5 bridges, number five. But here, even in the heart of downtown Roseburg, Tim had the river largely to himself. Along this river, we see houses like what we have here on the left. That's actually about the most I've seen on the trip so far. Celebrating the beauty of overlooked rivers like the South Umpqua is something Tim emphasizes in his guidebooks. But writing books about rivers has also given him the chance to dip his paddle in some of the biggest, the wildest, and longest rivers in America. He's paddled about 400 rivers by his estimation. Still, he speaks of Oregon rivers with a special fondness. One of the really amazing things about Oregon's riverscape is the diversity. Keep going. Nice. Keep boarding. We have just all kinds of rivers in terms of climate, in terms of landscape, in terms of whitewater, wildlife, fisheries. And in a state where hiking permits, campground fees, and park passes can add up quickly, Tim reminds us that many rivers don't cost a dime. On many of our rivers, you can go without worrying about a permit. It's usually public land. So rivers really offer that opportunity, which is becoming kind of a rare thing in today's world, where everything is so built up or so regulated that you just don't have the opportunity to be wild and young and free again and to pretend you're Huckleberry Finn going down the Mississippi River. On a river, there's often no need for a campground reservation. Solitude can be as easy to find as a sandbar. It can seem like pure escapism, but rivers also bring out the fighter in Tim. He's a vocal advocate for river protection, but his approach is more reflective than combative. To me, the connection to every natural landscape involves three fundamental emotions. And the first is a sense of love of that place. The second big emotion is a sense of outrage. When we realize what's happening to these places unnecessarily, 
maybe a dam that's built even though it's not needed or development that occurs right next to a river when it could just be set back a little bit from the shoreline when we realize that there's pollution that could be cleaned up. But it's not something we can live with. For that, we need a sense of hope. And that's the third great emotion that I believe is essential for people to get in the natural world, a sense of hope that we can do a better job. We paddled with Tim for just a few sunny days on a river. We saw just a handful of other people. It may be that places like this offer the break many of us are looking for, and maybe even need. All you do is dip that paddle in and pull it back thousands of times a day. And for some people, this might seem boring, but to me, it's a totally meditative experience. No cell phone, no conversation, no talk, no people, no nothing. Just you and the river, and there's a certain magic in that. 